Contour plots of our electric potential surfaces allow us to look at electric potential in two dimensions. The potential at all points on a single contour line is the same. So if this line is 10 volts and this line is 20 volts, we also know that the changes between these lines have to be constant. So I can predict that the next one's 30, 40, and so on. We can actually visualize gradients and forces on these contour diagrams as well. So let's start with the gradient. On a contour map, there are a couple rules for the gradient. First, the gradient always points toward higher potential. On these maps, the numbers on the lines will hopefully make that clear. Another rule for the gradient is that it must point perpendicularly to the contour line. So I've tried to illustrate this as well as I can using a marker. The last rule for the gradient is that a larger gradient will have a larger arrow. So when is the gradient the biggest? Well, because the gradient represents change of potential, the gradient will be biggest where the contour lines are closest together and smallest where the contour lines are spaced apart. The last thing we want to do on our contour map is draw the direction of forces. Do you remember our force equation? It tells us that the force on a positive charge is just opposite the gradient.